many issues that you've touched on, and it's um, it's exciting that that we are starting to grapple with this because certainly in September last year, I had the impression that not a lot of South Africans even had an inkling of the 4IR and that it's relevant and that it's here, never mind having an understanding. And indeed, it would help to have a, a conception which is um, across the board that we can rally around. It does seem like we need to prioritize. We can't do everything. We can't embrace the 4IR in its entirety. Nobody can. And my question for you is what should South Africa prioritize? I'll answer. <laughs> my guess is that Prof will say something similar, by the way. <laughs> um, so that's what I wanted to say at first. <laughs> Um, I think what we should prioritize is the technologies that we're already using that we can manufacture locally. So for example, drones is my great example that I always use. We use drones extensively in multiple industries across the country. So most of those are imported. So why don't we start with maintenance programs, move to manufacturing programs. A couple of years ago we ran a BRICS Future Skills Challenge and we had a challenge which was design, build, operate drones. And the students that took part in that challenge came up with the most amazing designs and implementations. We have the skill, it's just to actually the will to make it happen. <laughs> My feel is that um, we should look at the software side. Uh, I think we will have big competition on the hardware side, uh, manufacturing in South Africa for South Africa in terms of robotics, um, even drones maybe, but uh, nonetheless. I think if we don't develop the capability to work with the software and store the big data, we will not develop into a 4IR country at all. And I believe... Uh, Companies like General Electric are already starting with mega data uh, banks in Cape Town. But what does it help if we've got mega capability in Cape Town and none of us has got the money to access our cell phones because our data is so expensive? So it's a, it's a global picture and I think it's going to be on the software side. So I think I'm going to touch a, a different end of it. I think we need to get our education right. Because all these things that are being spoken about, without the right fundamentals in terms of education, we can get all the happiness we want to get, but we'll still be stuck. So if we can get our basic education system right, utilize this technology to ensure that children in the rural of rural areas, you know, have got access to learning. And, and it goes back to the data cost as well. That if, 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 if there can be channels, I mean, we've got post offices that are running uh, dry or being closed up. If those places can be technology centers in those villages out there and we ensure that there's connectivity, and children can actually go there and learn even if the teachers are not there, then we'll be fine. Yeah. So fine. Thank you very much. I can keep the microphone. Um, right, from the audience. Yes, Stephen, back here. Other questions? Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dewan Monji from the University of Pretoria. She's graduated um, in IT, actually. So uh, I would like to know, um, as this gentleman said um, that, oh, I think this is a lady. <laughs> she said that um, we as Africans, <laughs> we as Africans are still stuck with in the third um, industrial revolution. We actually have not gotten the grasp of it. So how would we get the grasp of um, fourth industrial revolution? Like, are we going to still play that catch-up game? You know, or are we going to be in the same line with the rest of the world? 
like how far are we from the rest of the world in that in terms of do we do we stop that third industrial revolution and then go to a fourth or do you continue with the third and then transition to a fourth? That was my question. Would you like to answer? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go first this time around. <laughs> so, so, so there's a concept called leapfrogging. And uh, essentially what it means is that you need to say, okay, this is what is available. We don't have all the other stuff behind us, but this is what is available and how does it fit into our context? And then we work with that with the context. I think a good example of this is um, the, 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 when we move, when we transition from cell phones to from from hardwired phoning to cell phones, you know, people didn't like wait for the cables to be installed, you know, We've got proper problems with copper wires and all that. But with these devices, things can happen wirelessly, so people just forgot about those. I mean, you can see even when you drive around. The cables are just falling apart, you know, people forgot about that. So they left that and forgot about it, and then they hooked onto the technology that was working and they connected to it. And I think uh, financially as well, if you think of what happened in, in Kenya and even right across the border in Zimbabwe, the challenges that they had with currency and all that, and they came up with these other forms of transacting, you know. So they didn't have to wait for one step at a time. They said, okay, we are here, we must live, we must continue with our lives. How do we tap into the available infrastructure to take ourselves forward? And I think that's what needs to happen even with this. We must just forget about the third industrial revolution. We don't even understand that one anyway. You know? <laughs> you must just go to Parliament, you'll see that. <laughs> but, but, but with where we are now and what is available, how can we... We, we need to... And I, and I think, like you're saying, you're an IT graduate. You guys are the ones who need to be saying, these are things that we need to latch on to. Because if you guys don't say that, you know, no one is going to say it. You can't be saying, must go and finish off with the bed. We don't have time for the bed. We jump onto the fort and we move forward. Yes, and Prof actually said something very similar to what I was going to say. Um, using the money example, uh, we had that potential banking strike in South Africa a couple of months ago um, around the fact that banking is getting digitized and that potentially is going to result in job losses. In Kenya, with the Mapesa example, I think they lost about just less than 7,000 traditional banking jobs were lost. But with Mapesa Banking Solutions, they created 65,000 new jobs as banking agents around the country. And the fact that access to money and access to financial transacting is now available everywhere not without having to catch a taxi from wherever I live to where the nearest bank is or where the nearest ATM is. Because I can't use data because in rural South Africa there is no data, there is no infrastructure. So if we can create those digital infrastructure, the framework, and the rules and regulations around that, so government needs to respond faster. Kenya's had Mapesa for how long now? I don't know. Years and years and years and years. We don't have anything yet. Well, not, not anything that goes across the banks. Let's rephrase that. All the banks have their own stuff, but nothing goes across the banks. I agree 100% with the prof. We, I think we leapfrog mm. third generation. Mm. And the proof of this is uh, we can do it in South Africa. From the radio, the rest of the world first had black and white television. We leapfrogged that completely and went to color in 1976 about, <laughs> if you can remember. And from there on, we now on, top, on the same level as the rest of the world with HD and full HD and all those things that I forgot. My name is Thomas. I'm from Mining Site. I'm a geologist by profession. It's not a question as such. I'm trying to chip into the question, where must we start? I understand the, the third, we cannot go back there. But uh, I want to say the same example that you said, that by saying your robot, the one, the, the robot that you, need, you, you, you started with, you undermined the intelligence of the employ, em, employ, employees. Under, yeah, underestimated. You underestimated, yes. 
And I think again, we are doing the very same thing. And May has just cited an example of the uh, banking sector where the people were actually so crossed that uh, the banking is getting digitized. I'm again saying, even if we can fast track and get into the fourth industrial revolution, let us communicate. What we do with the current labor that we've got, that does not have this expertise. What do we do with that? I think if we can start addressing that first, make people understand where we want to take the country to and how they must not be left behind. I mean, whilst we are still doing the new things like the education for the upcoming generation, I think we will be making the very same mistake of under, or underestimating the intelligence of the current people that are in the employment. So the biggest thing is what do we do with the same people that do not have this high I mean, education to understand where we're, what, what, what must we do with these people. I think that's where we need to start so that we carry everybody along so that when everybody gets dropped along the way and the young ones uh, 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 are picking up the balls, then nobody will stand up and say, uh, or maybe remain behind after five o'clock to break the robot when it does its work. You're 100% right, Thomas. World Economic Forum has an article called We Need a Reskilling Revolution. Right, and part of that talks about the number of people that are in employment, not just in South Africa, this is a worldwide challenge. The number of people that are in employment that will potentially be displaced if we don't give them new skills. Right, so definitely we need to do that. But in South Africa we have a much bigger problem than just people who are currently employed. What about the 30% of people who are not employed? What do we do with them? And we have a, a further challenge in if people are not working, how does government fund itself? Where does tax money come from? Where does our revenue come from as a country? So there are a whole bunch of questions that we need to answer. I agree with Prof. I've long said we need to put Wi-Fi in schools. Every single school and every single community should have free Wi-Fi. Because even if the teacher's not there, there are a whole bunch of things you can do to facilitate learning. Digital literacy is key. If we don't have digital, digital literacy for the future generations, how are they going to cope? There's another, um, I think it's a World Bank report that talks about 60% of kids in middle and low income countries, which is where we sit, finish school with not sufficient proficiency in maths, basic numeracy, and basic literacy. So they can't read properly. If you can't read, how do you understand? Even if you have digital access, what do you do? So Prof is right, basic ed, but we can help basic ed along with digital infrastructure. That's the first thing. So we can facilitate for everybody. Then it's also, but it, it takes a will and a strategy. Russia have a different problem to us. They have a, a very aging population. So they can't afford to lose old people out of the workplace. So what they've done is they do something um, they love skills competitions. That's the Russian psyche. They love competitiveness. So what they do is they have something called wise skills. So they retrain people, these older people who would be leaving the workplace, retrain them, reskill them, put them into skills challenges, and then use them as employees and as mentors. But it takes a will from government and a straight, definite strategy to make that stuff happen. You know, it's a very sensitive thing for us and uh, we've given all our workers a guarantee that we will do for IR without losing a single job. And the basic approach is this. You first just supply the operator with the interface. In other words, there's a, there's a computer screen in front of him where he can see what this machine can do and what he needs to do with that machine. The production then goes on as normal like before, but what we found is that our guys, especially the bright young ones, go up the chain, go past that, which I call an interface, which is that computer screen. They go past on the other side to the IT side, and they go up right, in, right into the, the, the improvement of that software signals that we get. 
And I think that is what we want to do in South Africa, because what it does then, instead of replacing people with machines, we increase the efficiency of our factories without buying new capital equipment. And with that production increase, we can then employ more people and then bring in new machines. Yes, I just was going to add my two cents there. I think the upskilling definitely, you know, the industry is working with the workers, that's important. It can't be a situation where, you know what, we're just closing the branches. We don't care what's going to happen to you, that's your problem. I think that's irresponsible of, uh, you know, companies to do that. It's, it's definitely not the way to go. So industry is a part to play. I, I, I think in these retrenchment pro processes, industry definitely is a part to play if they are deciding that they're going to go retrenchment. Then they must have other mechanisms to say, how are we supporting the alternative forms of employment that are coming up? Because we are letting you, we're not letting you go, we're transitioning you, reskilling you and upskilling you to go and play in a different space, which maybe you may not necessarily be operating in, but we're allowing you to make sure there's bread in the t on the table and the, and the family doesn't go hungry. But at the same time, I also think the imperative is on the individual. Because, I mean, when I went to do my PhD, there was no fourth industrial revolution. But the way it came, and I took my surfboard and said, you know what, I must ride the wave. I, I can't hear, be here. I mean, the president is talking about the fourth industrial revolution every time there's the opportunity. And you're telling me you're, wrong, you're not listening to the president? <laughs> I mean, listen to the president. Smell the coffee. You know, I need to do something. And for me, I think there's a mindset. I, I, I mean, half my students when I was uh, teaching the bachelor's program always used to say to me, Prof, you know, some of us went through Bantu basic education. <laughs> and maybe, yes, they can blame it on that. But I think right now, we've got all channels available to us, to get ourselves aware of possibilities, of opportunities, you just need to make up your mind. You, you, in, the, in the self same way you make up your mind to go and strike, can't you make up your mind to exploit the fourth industrial revolution? So, 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 yes, I think we can point to the state, we can point to the industry, we can point to everybody, but actually most of the times, the other three fingers are pointing to me. What am I going to do? As a researcher, I would have said, you know what, I did reconfigurable machines, I'm not going to ride this way, I'll just be stuck. I would be having funding now. But I've said, no, there's a wave that is coming, I need to ride the wave, what speaks to what I'm interested in, and where I want to go to. So I think um, the upskilling, the reskilling, is a, definitely an important part of the conversation. I just want to add to that, I always use this example when I talk about the impact of the industrial revolutions on people. I have an ex-work colleague who's also a friend. He must be in his late 70s now. He started off life as a typewriter repairman. That was his working job, his first job. Right. How many of you even use typewriters anymore? What is that exactly. <laughs> People still do use them, by the way. Anyway, he started off life doing that. And typewriters became obsolete, or started becoming obsolete. So he saw the wave, he saw the change, and he trained as a fax repairman. Do you even know what a fax is? Okay, no. Another obsolete technology. He was always of the obsolete ones. Right, but it was new at the time. Remember, he's like close to 80, okay? So it was new then. Right? In the days when like Stephen Fry talks about when he was the only person he knew he had a fax. You know, so you had to find someone else who had a fax machine just so they could send faxes to each other. <laughs> yeah. But he trained, he reskilled himself and he trained as something new. Faxes started becoming obsolete. He trained as, a, or reskilled himself and learned to be a hardware technician on PCs in the days when PCs were brand new. And then he moved from PCs to software, hardware to software. That guy is almost 18. He is still working. He keeps himself up to date with new software technologies. He still consults to clients. Artificial intelligence now. Mm. He's not quite there yet. <laughs> I think he might miss that, that way. <laughs> but the point is, he reskilled himself. He saw the changes coming. 
linked to what Prof was saying. And he made a plan to change. He didn't just sit there saying, okay, now the changes happen, now what? And there are guys who did that. There are guys who were typewriter repairmen, and that's all they ever were. It's what we choose to do. And if you're reading, if you're, I mean, I was a retrenched person. A couple of years ago, I was retrenched. And yes, it is irresponsible from a corporate point of view. But there's a great book, if you haven't seen it, called Disrupt Yourself or Be Disrupted. Have a look at that. And it talks about how we need to be responsible for our own change, our own learning, and we need to be reinventing ourselves. There's another great quote that I always use from, it was PwC research called, protect the person, not the job. The job is going to change. How do you, you as an individual protect yourself in that environment? How do you encourage your corporate, if you work for a corporate, to protect you in that